Hey everybody, this is my waterfall tank and today I want to talk about lighting and color temperature. I'm trying to work my way up to shooting a video about the difference between 2700K and 6500K and which one you're supposed to use and all that stuff. There's a lot of information out there swirling around. A lot of it is not so good. A lot of it is good information but doesn't really apply to our situation here in the aquarium hobby. And I'm going to sort all that out one of these days in probably a very lengthy video. But in an attempt to work up to that, I figure we may as well take some little chunks of it and start digesting some of the information a little piece at a time. And so what I want to talk about today is the, the difference between the 6500K and the 2700K usually refers to fluorescent lighting. And the reason there's that choice, one or the other, is because when you do one, you're sort of sacrificing the other. The 6500K, or we can even say a 5000K, has a lot of blue, but not very much red light. And then, of course, the 2700K, or a 3000K, you know, that softer light, has a lot of red light in it, but not very much blue. And plants need all of it. They need a full spectrum of light to do well. So if you're using a higher quality light, something better than a fluorescent, and a high quality LED, because if you use a low quality LED, you're effectively getting the same light as you would get out of a uh, fluorescent tube. But a higher quality LED that has a very high color rendering index, the color rendering index meaning that it more accurately represents natural sunlight, and the only way you can more accurately represent natural sunlight is by more accurately mimicking natural sunlight in, in, in the sense that you've got a much more full range of color spectrum in the light and therefore it reflects a much more accurate color when you shine it on things. It's as simple as that. So you can't have a really high color rendering index without having a really full spectrum of light. You just can't do it. So if you've got a light that has a very high above 90 coloring rendering index then you've probably got a light that has a very broad full spectrum and will do well on plants, whether it's a 2700K or a 6500K. When you've got the full spectrum, you're not talking about sacrificing red for blue. You're just talking about the proportions of it. So, for example, this tank, and of course the common conception is, is that you need 6500K or 5000K to get good lush vegetative growth and you only use the 2700K or the softer uh, light during flowering stages of your plants. And I don't see any flowers in front of us. This is all nice, just lush green vegetation. And this is under a combination of 2700K and 3000K. And the 2700K only recently became the good quality 2700K full spectrum of these Cree um, very high color rendering index LEDs. I really, really like them. I'm in the process of swapping out all my other ones, so I've got a stack of low budget spot and floodlights in the other room that are decent quality. They've got a color rendering index of 80, which again is on par with a fluorescent light. So in that case, you'd need to use one or the other, and that's why I've got a blend of both of them. These LEDs and this LED panel that was designed specifically as a grow light are full spectrum lights. So while it's a soft color, that doesn't mean there isn't any blue in it like you would have with a soft fluorescent light. It has virtually no blue light in it at all and the plants really suffer. This has plenty of blue light in it. It's just got a lot more red light in it and that way we get the appearance of this nice soft color. But the plants are getting plenty of blue light and therefore they're growing just fine. I recently showed you a little experiment I'd set up where I put uh, some cuttings and a few um, seeds that I was trying to root. There was a little plant, a little catnip plant I'd saved from the backyard and I had put it under a very low powered LED but it was a very high quality LED. It was one of these Cree um, 90 plus CRI uh, lamps and that experiment's done and over. I got that stuff all rooted in and grown, and it's planted in other planters now, and it did a fantastic job. But I knew it was going to do that because it's that full-spectrum, good, high-quality LED. So I set up a little experiment in the other room 
I whipped together a little box. I spray painted the inside of it white so we'd get full reflectivity and maximum, you know, light usage. And then I stuck a low budget 2700K LED over top of it. And I tried to pick a variety of plants that need everything from low light to not necessarily full sun, you know, highlighting requirements, but more light than, say, ferns and stuff like that. So, in fact, let's go have a look at that right now. I'm going to put you on pause. And this is what I went out in the yard and whipped together the other day. So I've given it a couple days to sort of stabilize. You can even see where some of the stone crop is actually turned back upwards. Instead of hanging down, it's now growing up towards the light. I got some creeping jenny in there, which is starting to grow up towards the light. I've got Christmas fern in the back. You can see that. Uh, this is sensitive fern. Both of those don't require a lot of light. But this is uh, Black Eyed Susan or Rutabecchia, if you prefer. Uh, that's a nice good flowering plant that does require a fair amount of sunlight. It needs full sun to partial uh, shade it can tolerate. And then this is a tiger lily. It's a young one and they usually don't flower until they've been in the ground for a few years. So I don't know if this one's actually going to produce a flower or not. But likewise it's a plant that needs a fair amount of light and whether it produces the bulbs that it produces instead of seeds uh, or it does produce a flower, either way it takes a lot of energy to do that and it needs a fair amount of light uh, in order to pull that off. So again, this is in my bathroom down here where I've got all of my plants that I grow out of my grow out tank and you know, I keep all of my little test kits and stuff on the thing back here. So I just slapped a box up there. It's just a cardboard box. I cut a hole in the top. I probably ought to fortify it a little bit there, but that's it. I poked a hole in the top, stuck a low budget. That's a Walmart LED. It's 2700K. And it is the TCP brand of chip. So this basically is the same quality of light. It might be a little bit better, but it's probably on par with what would happen if I had a compact fluorescent shining down on this. It's, I believe, 10 or 11 watts, but it is focused. So that does make it a little more potent than if it was just an 11 watt light bulb. And of course, I've got it in the white box so three sides of it are reflective and I'm giving it about 12 to 15 hours a day light depending on how early and late I'm you know down here it's nothing I don't have it on any strict schedule but we're gonna just give it some time and see how it does we're gonna see if we can get some flowering going on we're gonna see what kind of growth we get out of it and it'll just be something interesting to look at, or at least I find it interesting, um, because again, I know the good high quality LEDs that have that full spectrum light would grow this just fine in here. That's a lot of light if you've got plenty of blue, plenty of red, plenty of green, and you know everything else. If you don't have a full spectrum, we might find some different results. We might not get such good growth on some of these higher uh, light requirement plants. So make sure you're subscribed. Again, I am going to work my way up to doing that video where I go into a lot more detail about the light itself, uh, how it's produced, why one LED is better than the other, you know, where the whole mythology of this light needed for that and that light needed for this and all that. I'll get into all that. So make sure you subscribe. You won't miss that. You won't miss anything else. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you real soon in the next one.